In this video, we're going to build a URL endpoint where we can get the book information in a nice HTML page. Uh, There's also a video where we will realize we've done a lot of work already. Everything that we need to do in this video, you'll realize it's already been done. All right. So this is kind of an easy video if you think about it. And I'll tell you how, uh, how easy it is. Uh, we have a starting point for a web application, which is this guy here, the Better Reads app which does GitHub authentication and that's about it, right? Uh, I can have this be the starting point for everything else that we're gonna do, right? That's the goal. Um, now, what are the things that we need to get this to have one URL uh, handler, right? That's Spring MVC controller, which takes in a book ID and then it returns an HTML page with some book information, you know, the stuff that we've pushed to Cassandra. Well, we need a Spring MVC controller, of course. Okay. And then what do we need? We need a way to connect to our Cassandra instance. Okay. And then we need the model class and the repository class for connecting and getting data from that table, the books by ID table. Okay. Writing a Spring MVC controller, very simple. Okay. Connecting to Cassandra, we've already done it, right? We have we have an application which knows how to connect to Cassandra, which is the Better Reads data loader. Okay, so that part is done. Uh, the model and repository, also done. The Spring, the Better Reads data loader has the model and repository here already. Okay, so all we need to do is port all the stuff over to our new application, which is the Better Reads uh, app, which is over here. And then just write a controller, which calls that and, and returns the value. It's, it's fairly simple, right? So let's actually do that now. I'm going to first get the stuff from the Better Reads data loader, like all the things we need to connect to Cassandra. I'm gonna get all of that and put it to this other application. I'm gonna try and do a split screen and see if this works uh, so that you can actually see both of them side by side. This is the, the pain of every tutorial maker over here. We wanna have bigger fonts so that you folks can see it, but it takes up so much screen real estate that it becomes almost infeasible to do anything. All right, so I'm going to uh, reveal in Finder. So here is my uh, Better Reads data loader stuff. And I'm gonna show in Finder this guy, which is the, the application that we need. All right, this is what we're gonna build on. Okay, I'm gonna move this back over here as well. Okay, SRC main, IO, SRC main Java, the package structure, and then here is the connection package. I'm just going to copy this and uh, post paste this in the same location here. And then here is the package. And then I'm going to paste this here. All right, so it's gonna go to the connection. I'm gonna to have to clear out the, um, you know, arrange the packet structure a little bit. I'm gonna do that as well. So here is the uh, book package, which contains the model and the repository. I'm gonna paste those over here as well. So here is the model and repository. So those are, I think, the two files that we need. I'm gonna copy the application YAML file directly so I don't have to transfer over the file. So let me actually make this better reads just for consistency sake, okay? Um, I'm gonna create a package. It's better to do this in the Java packages view. I'm going to create a new package called better reads. Okay, and I'm gonna put these into that all right, so I have refactored the stuff here. So all of this is going to better reads. Um, so let me collapse this guy here, move back here. So the core package is IO Java Brains better reads. Inside that you have the book package, which has the model class and 
the repository. We have the connection package, which contains the uh, connection mechanism. Uh, we have the Better Reads app, which is the main app which starts the Spring Boot application. And then we have the security adapter, which is what configures the, uh, the GitHub authentication. We have the index.html, we haven't touched that. So these are all the files that we've got. Uh, there are a few things that we have to do to make all of this work. Okay, so for example, if you look at the book repository, you notice here that it's erroring out for Cassandra repository because we don't have the spring data dependency here, right? We don't have anything specific to Cassandra over here. So uh, we are gonna have to fix that, all right? So I'm gonna copy over the the dependencies from uh, the better reads data loader, okay? So what are the stuff that we need? We've got, um, well, we need this guy, Spring Boot Data Cassandra. What else do we need? Huh, I guess that's it. <laughs> that was the only one. So let's see if that fixes this issue of not being able to find a few things. I'm gonna put this over here, just about DevTools. Save, and then let it always sync up. And now, uh, those errors should ideally go away. Okay, so if we go to the repository, you see here, those errors are gone because now it knows uh, about the Cassandra classes. Okay, very well. Now, you might be asking a question here, which is, well, Kashik, you have the book.java, book repository.java in the other project, and you did a copy paste without even thinking twice about it. Isn't it better to extract this out, put it into a library, and then use that library? Well, the short answer is yes. If you're working in a big team and you need uh, a bunch of people to work on it together, but in this case, I don't think it is a, it's worth the optimization. So I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so now we've got all the necessary files and classes in place. Uh, I'm going to start by creating a controller, a book controller, which is going to, which is going to do the work of uh, responding to slash books slash ID, okay? Uh, I'm going to create the controller over here in the same uh, book package. Again, we're classifying these based on the thing that they're working on rather than put all controllers in one package, all services in one package. The industry kind of seems to be moving away from that organization more towards like the entity-based organization. Like, well, what, what is the thing that it's working on? Put them all in one package. So that includes controllers, repositories, uh, models, and all that. So in here, in the books, in the book package, I'm gonna create a new class called book controller, okay? This is a class which is going to be a, a spring controller. So I'm gonna put the at uh, controller annotation because this is basically gonna be responding to a request through spring MVC, right? So I'm gonna have a method here, which is gonna be a get mapping. Uh, and uh, this is going to map to, there's gonna be, um, slash books slash whatever is the id right book id i'm gonna call this book id and this is going to be the annotation which maps um this method the controller method i'm gonna call that public string get book and uh, the argument to this is going to be the the path variable which is this book id right anytime somebody says slash books slash one two three this get book needs an argument, which is one, two, three, which is how Spring MVC works, all right? So I'm gonna make a path variable, um, string book ID, this name matches this name, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to write code here, which is going to fetch the book, okay? How do I fetch the book? First, I need to call the book repository dot, um, you know, find by ID method, right? We already used find by ID uh, in the data loader when we were, um, we're trying to get the author, right? We had a find by ID over here. It's this guy, right? We're gonna do the exact same thing, but now this time for books, okay? So first I'm gonna inject the book repository, auto-wire it, auto-wired. 
book repository, book repository. Okay, and here I'm going to do book repository dot find by ID and then I'm going to pass in the book ID. Okay, this is going to give me one optional of a book. Depending on whether that book exists in the system or not, you're going to get an optional. Okay, so what we're going to do here is say if a book, I'm going to make this optional book. Okay, so if optional book dot is present, then I'm going to do optional dot get. So I'm going to get the book and this is going to be the actual book. And then uh, now how do I return it? Well, the thing is when you're doing um, time leaf, you don't return a model. Okay, what you return is what template to render. Okay, so here I can have a, a template, an HTML template, a time leaf template in the templates folder. You see there is an index.html. I can easily have a book.html and have this be the thing which renders the book. Okay, so in my book controller, I'm going to return book and what this does is it basically returns it basically tells hey render that book.html okay but i need to put this book object that i fetched from cassandra into the model so that when i'm rendering that time leaf template i can pluck properties from that model okay so to get things to the model you're gonna have to declare a dependency on the model okay so i'm saying i want the model to be sent to me so that I can put things on it, okay? So I'm gonna import model, and now here I can do a model.set, I think it's add attribute. Uh, I'm gonna use the attribute book, and I'm going to put the value, which is this book instance that I just pulled up from the database, from Cassandra database. Okay, so this is going to return book if the book is present. But if the book isn't present, we need to handle the error, right? So somebody has requested for a book which does not exist in the system, right? There is an ID which they've requested, but that ID doesn't, there is no book with that ID in the system in our database. So we have to handle errors. And one way we can do this is to just redirect to a an error page, okay? So I can basically do something like this, return um maybe a book not found okay so it's basically like says i didn't find the book and i can create a template for that too right because whatever you're returning here is the name of your html template i'm going to create a book not found.html and uh, this is going to just have a book not found Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit better. Right now it's just H1, which is fine. So over here in my book.html, I can render the book that I have created. Okay, so that I've fetched rather. So I'm going to um, add some HTML boilerplate. Let's see, book details, and then, um, no HTML and CSS for us. We might, I might, I'm thinking of doing bootstrap. It's easy. I don't want to focus too much time on the series on uh, styling. I might just do them and then show them over here. I know you, you know, you folks don't want to see me mess around with CSS and styling and all that stuff, uh, but I'll probably use bootstrap so that it saves even more time. Over here, there are a couple of things I need to do. First of all, I need this to be a time leaf template. It's not a regular HTML, it's a time leaf template. So what this means is uh, the thing that gets rendered is not static, it's dynamic. I need to be able to pull up stuff from the model that I have put over here, right? And I've put model.add attributes. Model, kind of think of model as like the serving tray where you somebody puts things in one end and another person picks it up at the other end, all right? So you're the cook, you have uh, prepared 
the book entity object and then you've put it on the serving tray and then you're passing it to the time leaf template and now in the time leaf template you need to kind of pick that from that serving plate and then you need to render the html okay well there are different ways you can approach this i'm just going to go to uh time leaf documentation and uh look up like a, a sample html file and um kind of use that over here right so i'm going to pick time leaf 3.0 oh uh, let's see here some basic html that i can copy paste Got to be able to copy paste as a software engineer. Let me search for HTML or maybe this. Oh, there you go. This should do. I'm going to copy this namespace here. HTML should have the time leaf namespace. You see here, this is what gives you the time leaf tags uh we don't need any of this and now over here here is an example paragraph okay you can put this paragraph here so how does this work the way time leaf works is you put this th colon and then your tag this is basically an attribute which refers to something in your model and then you have some stuff over here which will go away this is basically meant for the um HTML itself to be functional. One thing you will notice is when you're working with technologies like JSP, okay? JSP is uh, a way in which you can render these kind of pages using stuff uh, that you've prepared on the server side, right? Dynamic content you've prepared on the server side. So when you, when you create a JSP page, you have to have this rendered by the server in order to make sense out of it. Otherwise, just open, you cannot open a JSP page in a browser, right, directly as a file because nothing works. Everything is just rendered on the server. What Timeleaf have done is they've they've kind of made this approach where you know you, they just have this extra tag that you add for the dynamic functionality. But if you are not rendering this as a Timeleaf template, well, guess what? The browser is going to ignore this tag, and you're just going to see a paragraph with this text: "Welcome to our grocery store." All right. So this is an HTML file which is openable in a browser without it being server side rendered. But when it is being server side rendered. The contents of your actual HTML tag is going to be blown away and it's going to be replaced by your uh, time leaf tag, which gets data from the server, right? This is kind of like the philosophy behind time leaf templates so that you can actually open them just like any HTML file. All right, so here is a th colon text, which is basically saying, hey, get me the value from the model. Okay, that's the whole point behind this. So what I'm going to do here is basically get, um, I'm not going to use this one here, the hash is for a different purpose. I'm going to use the dollar, right? Dollar allows me to refer to the model, right? What's the model here? Model is called book. So I can refer to that by typing book here. Okay, and I can use a property on the book. So let's say I use what's, what's what do we call the book name, title? What do we call this? Name, okay? So I can use the book dot name over here, and then uh, I'm just going to make this book name. All right. So this should kind of do. Okay. So what we have is a controller which maps to slash book slash book ID. I pass in a book ID. It is going to find that from the book repository, put it on the model, and return the book template. Right. The book template is going to do what? Just going to print the book dot name over here into a paragraph. Simple enough. Now I'm going to run this and we'll see what happens. All right, run as a spring application. Well, it looks like we have an error right away. Error creating book name. All right, let me kill this and run this again. It seemed like it was already running. So let's try this one more time. Okay, I get an exception. What does it say? It says connection refuse. Okay, it's probably connecting to um, my local Cassandra, which, which is because my application YAML is empty. Ah, I forgot to do this. All right, so all I need to do is copy my application YAML configuration from here to there. Okay, I don't need the data dump locations because this is not going to be messing around with data dumps. This application name is better reads. All right, all this stuff 
remains the same. Save secureconnect.zip. I need to make sure I have secureconnect.zip. I'm going to go reveal in Finder. And then the other one, reveal in Finder as well. So the secureconnect.zip is basically the same file. It's going to go to this same path as the application YAML. Okay, there's a duplicate key. Uh, this is a problem with YAML. You gotta have, uh, you gotta consolidate your keys. Otherwise, the the thing that's parsing it is gonna get super confused. All right, so this this is data stuff needs to go over here. Okay, which means all this stuff needs to come way down over here. Okay, this goes over here. Um, let me actually consolidate this as well. Spring, and then um, application name as better reads. Sometimes, sometimes I feel that YAML is more trouble than it's worth. The 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 reason why people like YAML is like yeah, with property files you're gonna have to do all of that yourself one by one. Yeah, but in YAML stuff like this happens. At least with property files you can add and remove stuff without having to worry about what else is going on there. You wouldn't have got this error if you're working on just property files. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, still like prop still like YAML, but um, sometimes I feel I should just be using property files. And in my main application, I had to do this. Enable configuration properties, which is what I'm missing over here, right? So I'm gonna go back to my main application and uh, enable configuration properties. This is basically telling Spring to like, hey, go use this configuration property, which is this class over here, right? And this class is this guy, all right? So this is how it knows that it has to go find that. I need to get this method, which is a bean which configures the session builder, right? These are like uh, stuff that you had to do. Import everything. And then um, this is basically, you know, we did this when we configured the other project for connecting to Cassandra. It's the same thing that's necessary here as well, right? So those two things. First was uh, adding this and then this stuff. And then in the application YAML file, all the stuff necessary, like the key space, the username, password, and all that. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, looks like it's running. It's doing something. Okay, let's run this. Localhost colon 8080 slash books slash, well, book ID 10 should give me page not found. Well, it's doing nothing. <laughs> well, the book not found, all right? So what, let's see what's happening here. This is H1 book not found. It should have printed that. It should have showed that. Let's make this nice, um, you know, book not found, and then get rid of this stuff. And then here I have H1 not found, okay. Well, this doesn't seem to be working. So what I'm going to do is go here to my controller and uh, we'll try debugging this thing. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, set a breakpoint, kill this guy. There's localhost 8080, isn't it? Yeah, that should have worked. Okay, so I'm going to set a breakpoint here and then try debugging this, all right? So I'm going to go here and then click debug. Okay, when I access this, Okay, so it looks like it's not even hitting the controller, which is odd. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to remove this rest controller because it's not needed. I wonder if that's messing stuff up. I'm not going to bother refactoring and troubleshooting at this point. I'm just It's not needed anymore. So I'm just uh, going to stop. I've just commenting that out, right? So there was a rest uh, controller annotation over here. We don't want that. We just want one controller, which is our book controller, which is over here, right? Is this controller. Let's try this again. Let's see if it hits the controller this time. Okay, looks like it's not doing it. 
Now, the reason why you're not seeing anything over here is because we don't have this URL as a as an available URL publicly without without authentication. You see here, our security adapter has these two matchers, right? So slash and slash error are allowed to be accessible if somebody is not authenticated. But everything else needs authentication, right? So our, our URL here, which is books slash whatever, is not allowed for authentication, right? So you're not allowed to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to um, comment this out and allow any request to be uh, accessible, right? Because I don't think there is any specific URL in our application, which is uh, authentication only, right? We plan to have, what I plan to do instead is uh, make all these URLs work in both authenticated mode and non-authenticated mode. If somebody is authenticated, it's gonna show something. Somebody is not authenticated, it's gonna show something else, right? So it's not like, it's not protected from access by authentication. So that's the reason why I'm basically gonna say any request is accessible, whether you're authenticated or not. It's just that the thing you see when you load a page depends on whether you're authenticated or not. I think it's, it's an easier uh, way to do it and it's also good user experience. So I have basically commented this out, making any request at, oh, sorry should be permit all. Any request should be permitted. Okay, that's the goal. We don't want any request to be behind the authentication wall. We want all requests to be permitted, which is what this is doing. Any request dot permit all. Okay, so let's try rerunning this thing. You now it looks like it's already started. So I'm going to do slash books slash 10. And now we see book not found. Now what I'm going to do is pick a book ID and let's see if it uh, shows the book title. I'm going to paste this over here and it uh, looks like it's doing it, right? So this seems to be the book title. Um, let's pick something else just to make sure. Let's do this one. Okay, so this seems to be working fine. Um, but now what's left to do is to get all of the other stuff in the book object and then kind of display that in a nice UI, okay? Uh, again, I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, in trying to design this UI. I'm probably gonna use Bootstrap. Let me actually look that up. Uh, Bootstrap, if you don't know, Bootstrap is a, a library, a CSS library among other things, which allows you to, um, to build these nice UI components, nice UI with, um, with stuff that comes out of the box. Right? For example, there are some CSS styles that I can just pluck and add to my book.html, which is over here like this, okay? I just added some bootstrap CSS to my book.html. So now this is, you know, there is some default styling that you're gonna get uh, out of the box. You see this? The font has changed. Uh, you also have these uh, utility CSS uh, classes that you can use, which is pretty handy. Um, for the book, I'm thinking I'll use like a, a card. So if you go to components, there is this card element. I am probably going to use a, a card element which has like a, an image and then, uh, you know, stuff on the right. So let's see if we have something like that over here horizontal. Okay, so this seems perfect. So I'm going to copy this thing here and then uh, paste this over here. All right. And then uh, this is going to be the th colon text is going to be in the in the heading. Okay, the card title over here, right? I'm going to put book dot name over there. And then make this book name. The text inside really doesn't matter because again, it's just for uh, for making this um, viewable as a simple HTML page. But other than that, it really doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to remove, well, I can actually leave this here. It should be fine. So now what we have here is something that renders as a card. You see here? So it's basically a card with 
uh, the book name. I plan to have the book dot description over here and stuff like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to put some styling. I'm going to apply the styling and tweak it a little bit. And then we will resume. You can look at the GitHub repo for the final state. I really don't want to waste too much time messing around with CSS, considering this is not the scope of this course and the series. Also, the CSS styling I'm going to do is very basic. It's not going to look very fancy. Just workable enough is what I'm going for. So see you on the other side of my CSS styling adventures. Okay, so this ended up being much simpler than I thought. So here is the the HTML that I've written. Okay, it's basically still using the card, but I have the image over here, and then I have this big name, right? This is a large display one, means it's essentially a big name, and then I have uh, the author name, book description, and published date, all right? So this is what it looks like right now, okay? Um, the image is empty. Let me actually stick this image in here, right? Um, I'm gonna put this image src equals this, just to test, just to verify what it looks like. Um, not the same image, of course, but yeah. Yeah, that should do. This is fine for now. Uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, plug those values, at least the ones that I know uh, are there. So, um, author name. Let's do this. I'm going to, um, oh, it doesn't display an array. All right, so let's at least do the dis book description. And this is gonna be a book dot description. If it doesn't exist, it's fine. I guess it's just going to um, remove that, which is fine. And similarly, the published date. This is going to be book dot published date. So it should, it should bring that date over here. Um, for authors, since it's a it's an array, um, I don't know. Let's let's try this. I'm going to just get the author names as is, and uh, let's see if it is is decent enough, right? So we have author names. So I'm going to just show the author names here and see if it renders decent enough. Again, not too hooked up on styling. Author names. Uh, not bad, not bad. I'll, 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 I can live with it for now. That should be fine. I'm gonna check one more. Yeah, not bad. This will do. For now, this will do. We can tweak this later again. Get into tweaking CSS this is gonna take forever. All right, so this one, the image needs to be from the from the image that we get, right? Book dot uh, co cover image, right? So we we have an array of covers in the book, but what we want is basically just the first one. I just want to show the first one, and I want to construct this kind of a URL from that cover ID, right? So I need to be able to get this particular thing, or maybe even get the large one, right? Um, I can do this in the HTML or I can prepare that URL in the controller and send it. I am leaning towards the latter. So what I'm going to do is here, after I get the book, before I uh, send it to the model, I'm going to check if this book has cover IDs, right? So if IDs is not equal to null and uh, book dot get cover IDs dot size is greater than zero. I'm going to take the very first book dot cover ID and then I'm going to construct this this URL. Okay, what's the URL? It's this guy. Okay, I'm going to say um, let me create a final variable here private. Final string. Let me call this cover image root. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get the cover ID here. Um, I'm going to have a string cover image. I'm going to call it cover image URL equals 
the cover image root and then add to it book dot get cover IDs and I'm gonna get the first one which is cover IDs dot get of zero. I verified that there is at least one. Let me make sure I have the slash here. All right, so I have the slash at the end. So I'm gonna get the cover ID of zero and then I'm gonna append it with, what do we have here? I'm gonna put large here, right? So it's gonna be dash L dot JPG. Dash L dot JPG. So this is gonna be my cover image URL. And then I'm gonna put this in a model, okay? So I'm gonna have a model um, dot add attribute. cover image is going to be this cover image URL, okay? I'd like to have a, a no image thing as well. Like if, if something doesn't have an image, it should show um, the typically what you see, like a, a, a cross or something like that, which, you know, a circular thing. You know what I mean? Let me, let me look it up, right? So I'm gonna go here to um, images.google.com and then search for no image. Okay, something like this, no image available. This is good enough. I'm going to save this as, not link. I'm going to save image as SRC main resources. I can uh, put the static stuff over here. I'm gonna create a new folder called static and then a new folder called images. And inside this, I'm going to make this no dash image dot PNG. Okay, so there should be a no image. Okay, here is static no image.png. Okay, perfect. So here I'm going to say, okay, cover image is going to be this guy. And then uh, else, let me get this out here. Else string cover image URL. Actually, let me make this like, let me get like this. Cover image URL equals slash images slash no dash image dot was it png yeah no dash image dot png png okay and then if there is a cover image then i'm gonna put that thing there and then outside the if i am setting the cover image to the sky okay and now in my book.html, I can display that thing, okay? So uh, instead of SRC, I'm gonna put um, th colon SRC is going to be dollar cover, okay? Let's see if this works. Um, now I have the author names and I have the uh, the cover image as well, which I'm kind of calculating when the book is loaded in the page, right? Um, let's try this. Okay, looks like it's worked. It's gotten the large cover image, which is kind of what I wanted. Uh, let's pick this book. Okay seems to be doing what it should be doing, right? It seems to have the same name as the title, which is important. Uh, I'm gonna try one more book and then we'll move on, all right? Um, let's take this guy. Okay, here's a book that teaches you Excel, awesome. All right, so we have the, the image, the title, the author, and the published date. I can probably look at something which has description, 
so that uh, we can see that too. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna bother searching it. It's just a paragraph, so it should just show up um, where I have where I have this thing. So not too worried about that. So I have the book page, which basically loads the book details off of something, right? So I have uh, you know the title, the author, the description, and so on. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, first let me check this in. Okay, I'm gonna say add book page and controller. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, provide the ability for people to search for a book. Because right now, what's happening is like you, you have to know the book ID in order to look up the book, right? What if you wanna search? You, you have the title and you wanna do uh, a search, a look up. Uh, in the first, uh, you know, the design videos, I talked about how, um, you know, if you need to do something like that with like a, a transaction database like Cassandra, uh, what you would need is a separate instance of uh, some kind of an indexing um, mechanism, right? You'll have to lo roll out your own elastic search, which indexes out of your Cassandra database. We're not gonna be doing that for the scope of this tutorial. What I'm instead gonna do is leverage the search API provided by uh, the Open Library API. I'm gonna use that to get the book ID. And from there, we let our book page take on the work of displaying the book information. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll implement the search feature.